in a dungeon it is Tuesday August 6 2019 and we're gonna film SOS number three so today I'm just kind of I mean really this is a, a state of the shop and what we've been doing uh, last couple weeks I really haven't uh, I've cut uh, some video not as much as I would have liked to um, but I have some more content that will be coming so highlights We've been, it's been 30 days since we started this, and uh, I've uploaded 10 videos. Uh, I've got two more that I'll upload this weekend, and possibly a third, uh, maybe four. Um, I want to talk about some of the lessons learned. So, first 30 days of doing the whole YouTube thing, and what a tremendous learning curve it's been. And so I've made a lot of errors, uh, a lot of a, a parody of errors. Uh, what could go wrong has gone wrong. Um, just a, a lot of different things that I've learned. And so I want to take just a few minutes to hopefully help uh, new YouTubers uh, learn from my mistakes and maybe give you a place to start from so that uh, you, know, you might avoid some of the potential errors that, that I made. So, to start with, uh, the very first videos that I shot, I just used the existing uh, microphone on my camera, and we'll talk about the camera here in just a second. And oh my gosh, it was terrible. Uh, there's so much background noise here in the shop that it was just washing out everything. And uh, so uh, I went and I bought a directional mic, um, and I bought uh, off of Amazon, uh, what's called uh, the Tackstar. Let's see if I can get in here close so you can see it. And it's a directional mic. It's kind of big, um, but it did a pretty decent job. I was happy with it. I think it was like $26 or $27. It wasn't very expensive. And uh, I shot most of the, I, my fact is I shot all the video uh, up until today with that um, microphone. Um, so, I then purchased a Rode, R-O-D-E, microphone, which is on the camera now, um, and I'm, I'm hoping that it will be even better. Uh, so the jury's still out on that. Uh, let's see, what are some of the other things that I did? Oh yeah, so what I like so far about the Rode is that you plug it in and it's on. You don't have to turn it on or off. Uh, the Tackstar uh, has its own battery which I guess is a good thing and maybe not a good thing. I don't really know. Uh, but more than once, I shot video with the microphone off. And uh, so I had to reshoot uh, uh, there's two or three of them, which, you know, they were segments. So it wasn't terrible, but, you know, it, it's very frustrating when you, you do something and you, you get done and then realize, oh, there's no, there's no, there's no audio with that. Uh, so did that a couple times. Um, let's see what else do I have. Oh yeah, so I also uh, did have done uh, what three or four different tutorials that on on the computer, and so initially I tried shooting that just with the camera, and two of them came out okay. Uh, the third one, I shot it three. No, I shot it a total of four times. I shot it three different times, and it was either uh, glaring on the screen, uh, or it was slightly out of focus, so you actually couldn't read what I was doing. Um, I had a lot of issues, and so uh, I was trying to figure out a way that I could uh, record directly from my screen. And uh, I, there's a couple different ways to do that. I uh, researched that, Googled it. Google, my Google is strong sometimes. And uh, so the number one thing that I found was that there's an Xbox console app that you can use that does recording. Um, however, we have uh, on our system here at work, we have a program called ShareX that was already installed. And 
I just used that and it turned out pretty good. Uh, I, I will have to try the Xbox console app uh, from my home computer. I don't want to I don't want to put it on the work computers because then the administrators will be looking at me like, why do you have an Xbox app? Not because I'm playing games, because I'm trying to do work. Uh, so, all right. Uh, some of the early issues that I have, and I, I probably still um, have issues with this. It, oh, actually, going back to, so when I did the uh, recording using the ShareX of my, of my computer screen, uh, I, needed a, I needed a microphone. And so I got just a cheap uh, standalone microphone that plugs into the computer, and uh, this seemed to work okay, uh, well enough. At some point in time, I'll probably want to uh, spend a little more money and get a little better quality mic, but you know, it is what it is. Uh, it worked well enough. Okay, so jumping back, uh, the biggest thing that I've learned is that there's no good time to shoot. You know, you always you want you want to wait till you got everything set and, and everything. You know, you're, you're ready, and it's just not going to happen. And you know, so I bought all this equipment over a year ago, um, and and like you know, it took me it took me a year to actually get to the point where I'm like, you know what, I'm just I'm just going to start shooting. And, and I watched uh, some other uh, helpful hints. Uh, for new YouTubers, and that was one of the biggest takeaways that uh, that I got. And I, and I think it was a compilation of ten different uh, uh, YouTubers who are, are being very successful. And you know, that was one of the big takeaways: is start shooting now and have fun with it. And, and in all honesty, I mean, since I started shooting this, I've really enjoyed it. And uh, you know, I've made some bloopers. I've made a lot. Of, I've made a ton of mistakes. But I've come away with some pretty decent quality videos, I believe, and uh, you know I absolutely love to hear feedback from from uh, my subscribers to say, hey, you know, try this or try that. But as of right now, I I think that I've shot some pretty decent video, and, I, and I'm pretty happy with how things have gotten better and better and better, and they're going to continue to get better and better. All right, so what's some of the equipment that I use? Well, I started off. And I, order, and, I, and I did a lot of research, and the Canon EOS Rebel SL2 um, was one of the most consistently highest rated cameras. And so, that's what I bought. Uh, wasn't terribly expensive. I, I, I bought a bundle, uh, and I could have saved some money, and I would recommend that you save some money, because I bought the bundle. And so it had different lenses and filters, and you know, it even came with a, a tripod. And you see that this tripod's sitting here because it's cheap. It works, but yeah, it doesn't work real well. And so, save yourself some money. Buy the camera with uh, I've got a what do I got on here? An 18 to 55 millimeter uh, lens. Um, and, and I've done all my shooting with that. And, and I think for the most part, that's really all I need. You know, I, I could see some potential for a wide angle lens and, and maybe even, you know, a, a telephoto lens also, but I, for what you spend for that, I, I, I don't think it's worth it. I don't think the value's there. All right, so uh, yeah, just buy the camera with the lens, get an extra battery. I still yet have to buy an extra battery, and uh, that has uh, caused some issues with shooting a couple times. It's not been huge, but it would be so much more convenient if I could just slap in a new battery and continue. Uh, so, uh, oh yeah, so <laughs> the different um, tripods have different mounting plates. And I always thought that, you know, it was kind of a universal thing. And uh, when I did my, uh, I did several segments on creating the uh, Noga holder, and I was basing that off of a, uh, a file that I, I downloaded off of Thingiverse as just a, a shoe for this. Well, my new tripod actually uses that smaller footprint. This one uses the larger footprint. I don't know. but. 
it is what it is. And that's one of my favorite sayings. And you've probably heard me say it a few times already. It is what it is. So, not that. All right, cameras. Canon EOS Rebel SL2. Like I said, I did the research and it came back as one of the most highly recommended, consistently recommended. I wouldn't say highly, but it was consistently recommended. So I got it and initially I didn't like it. I really didn't care for it. So what were some of the issues? Uh, I just didn't really know how to use it. And, and I still don't. I'm still a neophyte at using all the features of the camera. So read the book. I still haven't read the book. I need to read the book. But directions are for when you're totally lost, right? <laughs> so, but I love it. Uh, it shoots really good quality uh, videos. I've been really impressed with the quality of the videos for, for the amount of money spent on the camera. Um, let's see, what else? Uh, so, I did several, I did a couple videos on creating, you know, different things for, you know, my Hero 3 Plus. And to be honest, I haven't shot any video with it yet. I'm going to. Uh, when I get back into shooting machine shots, I really plan on using uh, the, the Hero 3 a lot because with that Noga holder adapter that I made, and this is a Noga holder, these things are great. Um, really, really sturdy. Got a really good quality magnet. It'll stick to anything. Um, so thanks ABOM79 for putting me onto these because I've been using real cheap ones and really didn't care for them. <coughs> I bought one for here and I bought another one for, for home because uh, they're great. I love them. Uh, so the Hero 3, I have. Uh, really, uh, I did shoot some video from High Country Bus Festival with that, which I'll be posting later this week. It's one of the videos that I will be posting. Um, so, to create thumbnails, um, what I typically use is my iPhone. Uh, because on YouTube, your thumbnail has to be below 2 megabytes um, in order uh, to use it as a thumbnail. And so the easiest way that I found to do that, the quickest, is I'll snap a picture that I want to use as a thumbnail and then I'll email it to myself and when I get ready to send it'll ask me, it gives me three different options for the size of the email and so it'll automatically compress that photo down and I pick the one that's closest to two megabytes without going over and send it. And then it goes right to my computer, I can pull it off, and bam, it's done. I don't have to do anything to it. I can also, you know, I do like the ability to uh, crop and resize just right on my screen. I love that feature. It, it keeps me from having to go to another program uh, to make changes to the video. So quick and easy, I, I love it. I mean, that, that's what I'm all about, quick and easy. Another thing that you will need is an external hard drive. Uh, especially for me, because I do stuff here at work on two different computers, actually three different computers, depending on what I'm trying to do. I also have my computer at home that I do some on. And so the ability to download all the raw video and then the project files into one spot is great. And I've got it organized. Uh, I do raw video by day shot. There's a folder for each day that I shoot, and that raw video gets dumped into there. And that way I can go back and find it later if I need to. And it's made it really, really simple for me uh, when I'm doing my video editing. Uh, so I, I think that was a two terabyte uh, that I picked up at Walmart for it was like $79. It wasn't really expensive. Uh, I would have gotten a four terabyte, but they didn't have it in stock. But you will need one, and it will make your life so much easier. And so 
save early, save often, and then be organized in how you um, save your data. You know, your raw footage, your project files. Um, that's one thing that you know I've taken extreme care with as I'm shooting to make sure that everything uh, is organized so I can go back and find stuff and that, that has been a lifesaver. So some of the other errors, some of the issues that I've made, um, again, if you read the directions on your equipment, um, they'll answer some of these questions and you'll avoid some of these problems. So what I was finding is that when I would download raw footage from my camera, and this happened three or four times before I figured out the problem, is that your camera linked directly to USB to your computer, any file over two megabytes, or no, no two gigabytes, two gigabytes, uh, may or may not download. And so what was happening is that when I have a long stretch of video, which I, I and we'll talk about that here in a second, um, like one out of three, the file would be there, but there's nothing in it. It's zero bytes. And so there was three or four times that that happened to me, and I thought, well, shoot. And so I'd go back and I'd reshoot the video. Well, come to find out, is that if I want to transfer a file that's over two gigabytes, I have to use uh, a card. I can't just do it direct from the camera. I have to take the card out of the camera, use a card reader to my computer, and then there's no problems, no issues. And so that caused me, again, to shoot three or four different long videos um, unnecessarily. And when I started researching it, you know, uh, there, was, there was somebody uh, who pointed it out very quickly and, you know, and it's, read your manual. Yeah, okay. I'm really not one to read the manual unless I get totally lost. But, so that, that caused some issues for me. All right, so I use OpenShot Video Editor. And again, I did the research on this. And OpenShot um, was somewhere in the middle uh, as far as ease of use and then uh, ability to do different things. And I've been happy with OpenShot so far. Uh, some of the things that I really like about it is that uh, it was developed primarily as a Linux platform. And that's great because I, I use Linux here in the office. Uh, but it also has a Windows version as well. They're both free to download. So I, I do like that. Um, it is a little bit limited, I think, uh, but I'm still not using all of the features that it has available, but I'm getting better. And so some of the things that um, I have done, if you look at the very first video to now, is that you know I've developed an intro um, a, a common intro, and I like it. Uh, I added video to it, uh, or not video, audio to it, <coughs> a couple sessions ago, and I'm happy with that so far. Uh, more to come. Uh, I have plans to create an animated uh, fly-in intro, and uh, it's probably going to be a, a, a fairly long, drawn-out process for me. Uh, don't learn very well. Uh, I have a traumatic brain injury from being blown up in Afghanistan, and uh, so it's 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 hard for me to learn new stuff. Um, so it is what it is. Uh, I'm not complaining. Uh, I live a good quality of life, and uh, I'm enjoying making these videos. So I've made these backdrops. Uh, you've seen the SOS uh, backdrop as well. Those are going to continue to get better and better because uh, I, I have a lot of things that I want to do. I'm also going to make, uh, along with the animated uh, fly-in intro, I'm making a, a backdrop 
that's going to be all 3D um, that I use for filming stuff like this and then you know if I'm doing a close-up of something I'll have it there as well um, I'm very excited about that uh, again you know it's going to be a steep learning curve I'm sure um, but I'm, I'm enjoying being able to experiment and, and do all this stuff uh, so what's to come uh, I have video from High Country Bus Festival um, I've got some stills of I don't know, like a hundred different buses, uh, Volkswagen buses. Uh, we did uh, a float down, and I took some video from the river uh, with all the buses. And uh, so, just just something neat and cool and different. Uh, if the Volkswagens aren't your thing, then you probably don't care, uh, and that's okay. You know, don't watch it. But uh, it's one of the things that I do enjoy, and so I, I'm I'm kind of excited about. It. I'm going to have a My Toolbox session uh, that I'll shoot from home uh, probably this afternoon because uh, I picked up some, some good stuff uh, this last weekend and uh, some of it's too big to drag in here. But uh, so that's coming up. Uh, my turret tailstock videos, <laughs> I'm going to at least get the first portion of those edited and posted. So I think within the next week, I'll have another four to five videos posted. Uh, look forward to hearing from viewers. Uh, if you like the content, please subscribe and uh, please feel free to, to leave comments and let me know, you know what you liked, what you didn't like, and uh, I'll, I'll certainly listen. Dr. D out.